guys, my name is Shay and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reviewing Legacy Season 3, Episode 13, One Day You Will Understand. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get it. The episode starts off with Alaric talking to Dorian on the phone, saying that he will send someone to pick up the artifact. Caleb is in his office and he questions Alaric about his decision regarding Cleo. Alaric tells him that he is the headmaster and he has to be the one to make these tough decisions. Caleb says that with Cleo's actions, he understands that she has to go. He asks Alaric that before he makes his decision, he has some things he needs to settle with Cleo first. Hope comes back in her room and she is looking through Landon's belongings of weapons. Landon comes in and frightens Hope and she compliments him on his haircut. Landon doesn't have a response to that and Hope leaves to let him finish getting dressed. She asks if he wants to have breakfast together and she leaves. Josie and Finch are having breakfast and Josie is filling her in on everything at the school. Josie tells Finch that she is happy she decided to come with her. Finch tells her that she is still not sure yet about it, but that she will see how it goes. Finch mentions how Josie is the headmaster's daughter, while she is someone of a loner who has who hates group activities. Josie grabs her hand and asks her to give it a chance, and that she will return the favor and give her a tour of the school. Hope and Landon are on the dock, and Landon says that he hasn't been around people much lately, and it's going to take a while. Hope says that she did a locator spell to make sure that it's really him, which is why she was going through his belongings earlier. Hope says that she is trying to be patient with him, but that she has a lot of questions. Landon says that he is still trying to process everything, and it's hard to put into words. Landon says that he could use something to get his mind off everything, and Hope has an idea. Caleb comes to talk to Cleo, and she is choosing to not talk a lot about everything that just happened. Caleb confronts her, and she confesses that she is not the monster that everyone thinks she is. She says her past has a way of catching up to her. She does a spell, which, while holding Caleb's hands, to do a deep dive into Cleo's past, it goes back to Nigeria in 1464 AD, and it shows a young Cleo playing outside with a frog. She is running to her home, and Caleb sees her and questions what they are doing there. Cleo asks her grandmother where the warriors are going, and her grandmother tells her a story. She says that there was a monster who lived in the woods and sought out a happy and magical village. It was searching for something special, and the monster wanted that thing so badly, it threatened to destroy the village to get it. The warriors gathered to defend their home, but before they set out the battle, a muse used her powerful magic to get the warriors to fight with their words instead of their weapons. The warriors went into the woods to talk with the monster, and the monster agreed to spare the village in exchange for what it wanted. Cleo asks what the monster wanted, and before she can answer, a warrior comes in saying that it was agreed. Hope and Landon come to the Miss Mystic Falls, and Landon tells her that he can't come inside with her. He mentions how when he was in the prison world, he ran into a monster who makes you see things that aren't really there. He says that he kept hallucinating being rescued over and over again, and Hope tells him that he can just wait outside. A guy threatens Landon and asks if he's missed being stuffed in his locker, and I don't remember if we've seen this character before, or maybe we have and I just don't remember, but I don't know. <laughs> Back in the deep dive, Cleo's grandmother says that she is leaving to keep the village safe. She confesses that Cleo is a muse and that she is the seventh daughter of a seventh daughter. She tells Cleo that a muse inspires people and that someday she will be powerful too and that people will need her. She says to tell her sisters that she loves them and Cleo rushes to the door and does a spell to take her basket from her. Her grandmother takes the basket and tells her that she loves her and that one day she will understand. Cleo sits on the floor and cries and Caleb tries to comfort her and says that she is a badass in the future and that she will be okay. Cleo gets up and does a spell that kicks the door down and she runs outside. Cleo tells her grandmother that she can protect the village while she can protect her. Cleo tells Malivore that she is amused and to take her instead of her grandmother. She takes Malivore's hand and they walk away together. Back to reality, Cleo tells Caleb that they must make sacrifices to keep the people that they've left safe. Hope comes outside Mystic Falls and she sees a crowd of people and finds Landon aggressively punching the guy who threatened him earlier. Hope asks Landon what's wrong with him and he storms off. Caleb tells Alaric about Cleo's story and Alaric says that that's what Cleo wants him to think and that she is controlling the narrative. Caleb says that he believes her, and Alaric says that they need more information. He goes to talk to Cleo again, and Alaric stops him and says that neither one of them is qualified to get it. He says that they need someone to decide what to do in the situation. Josie brings Finch into the gym, and it introduces her to Jed and the rest of the pack. Alaric comes in the gym, and Josie introduces Finch to him. It was cute how when she was introducing Finch, she didn't really know what to call her. <laughs> she was like so quick to say girlfriend, but then she like caught herself. <laughs> There's also this funny moment where Alaric is telling Josie that something bad is going on, but he won't exactly say what, and he's trying to compose himself and does this fake smile because Finch is there. <laughs> Josie tells Finch that she will be back before she knows it, and that Finch is in goodish hands with the werewolf pack. 
Hope is running after Landon, and Landon confronts her to ask what's really on her mind. Landon says that after they made love, he was trapped in Malivor, which felt like for years. He says that it was about survival, and he learned how to fight and kill so many times. He mentions the spell her, Lizzie, and Josie did, and that's how he got back. Hope comes to the realization that Landon has been back for weeks. Cleo's in the art room, and Josie mentions that she did black magic, and she did some really bad things to the people that she loves. Cleo says that Malivor wanted her to create, and that's how she learned to make friends. Cleo grabs Josie's hands and they do another deep dive and a young Cleo makes a frog sculpture out of mud. She does a spell to make it come to life and Malivore comes in, taking the frog and eating it. Cleo says that while she missed her family so much, she longed to make friends. Malivore continued to eat each one of them, so Cleo came up with another idea. Back to reality, Cleo says that she would create a vessel for, for Malivore and that that would be his salvation but also hers. Back into the deep dive, Cleo tells Malivor that since she gave him his vessel, she wants her freedom now. Malivor says that he will not let her go and that he will get rid of the vampires, witches, and werewolves and create his own species to take their place. Cleo does a spell that hems Malivor up on the wall and it leaves him stuck and she leaves. Hope and Landon go back and forth about him being back for weeks and not telling her. Landon says that he needed time to figure out why Malivor wanted Cleo and why there was a fake version of him running around. And I can understand that at least. Hope questions Landon why he would let her be with a golem, and he replies that it seemed like the better option because she seemed happy and that he was a mess. As they are arguing, a monster comes from behind a tree, and Landon and Hope are ready to defend themselves. Josie comes to alarm because she says that while she thought their, her and Cleo's experiences were the same, they are not. She mentions how she chose to do black magic willingly, while Cleo was torn from her family and forced to do magic. She mentions how she almost killed MG and actually killed Alyssa, and how Alara just let her back into school like nothing happened. She asks if Cleo was his daughter, would he be doing this to her? And his facial expression when she said that, and I think we all can agree, that he would not be doing this to her. And Alara, he has his moments of being a good father, and then there are times where, like I said before, he's so wrapped up in the school that he loses sight of them sometimes. But one thing that I can say for sure is that he will move heaven and earth to protect Lizzie and Josie and keep them safe, and he loves them more than anything, so I can't say that. Josie tells him that Caroline and him built the school to help the supernaturals, but not to condemn them to an eternity of loneliness. Hope does a spell on the monster, and it doesn't work, and Landon tosses the artifact, and the monster catches it. Landon charges at the monster with a weapon, and the monsters knock him down. Hope pulls out an axe and says that this needs to be done the old-fashioned way. <laughs> I don't know why that was hot to me, but <laughs> it was. Alara comes to Cleo and asks, why did she create a golem of Landon, and why did she try to kill Hope? Cleo says that he already knows the answers to that question and that Hope must die. Hope and Landon tag team the monster and it was a moment. I really liked them teaming up for this scene and kicking some ass so it was good to see. <laughs> Afterwards, they both see that the, art that the artifact is broken into pieces. Cleo says that Hope dying is the only option but that she has tried to find another way. Alara does a deep dive into Cleo's past and her confessing that she has been sealed in the artifact for centuries. She followed them both back to the Salvatore school. She says that when she learned the school was in need of financial assistance, along with the supply of Malibu mud, she helped. Back to reality, Cleo confesses creating the le leprechaun and the ferryman. She says that she created the ferryman so that Hope would believe that he had granted her wish to have Landon back. The monsters after the ferryman and Landon's golem were meant to find her and that she had to prevent anyone from learning her true ori oranges. She says she tried to keep them all safe, but when that seemed impossible, she was forced to make a terrible choice. She says there is nothing more that she wants than to see Malibor destroyed and that Hope has to become a tribe of it. Alaric mentions all the people that Hope has lost and that he won't sit back and watch her lose her human life or the possibility of having a family of her own one day. Cleo says that she can relate to loss because she says she didn't go back home in fear that Malibor would torture her family and friends. She says that she moved to Italy where she met Leonardo da Vinci and he helped her heal by sketching the friends of hers Malavar murdered. She mentions that he was her first and only love. She says that she believes her grandmother is still watching over her. She says that she inspired Leonardo to create the artifact and used her powers to shield her from Malavar. And she said that they both agreed to keep her existence a secret and they parted ways. She says that Hope's decision to become a tribe is hers to make and that it should have been like that from the start. Alara tells Cleo that she will always have a place at the Salvatore School if she chooses to stay. Josie comes back to the gym and is to find Finch and Jed wrestling, and Josie was definitely turned on by that. <laughs> that was funny. Finch wins, and she tells Jed that they will do it again sometime. Josie apologizes for pressuring Finch and, and says that she doesn't have to go to the school if she doesn't want to. 
Ben says that she wants to attend the school, but on only one condition is that they make it official and become girlfriends. Josie's face was too cute, and she looked the happiest that I've seen her in such a long time. And she said that before the finish, too, so it's just really, really cute to see. Hope tells Landon that he can take his time to tell her what happened to him in the prison world. Landon says that while he found Hope to be happy with the perfect version of him, he was angry at first, but then he realized the truth. He says that the relationship was doomed and that they exist to destroy each other. He says that they should stay far away from each other and that he doesn't belong at the school without her. He tells Hope goodbye and he leaves. Danielle's acting in the scene was so amazing. Like, I felt every bit of emotion that she was showing. Like, man, I really felt it. Caleb comes to Alaric and he lets him know about his decision regarding Cleo. He tells Caleb that Cleo left and that she is looking for a fresh start. Caleb is shocked and hurt and says that he wanted to know if Cleo's feelings for him were real or if it was just part of the act. Caleb says that they should go after her and Alaric replies that they should respect her wishes. Cleo's at the bus stop where Landon comes over. They are properly introduced and Cleo mentions how he kidnapped her. And Landon replies that she tried to kill his now ex-girlfriend Hope. Landon mentions how he heard that she is not the bad guy that everyone thinks she is. And Cleo reassures that she isn't and that she is leaving Mystic Falls. She says that she is going to find another way to kill Malivore. And the episode ends with Landon asking her if she needs a hand with a plan and Cleo smirks. <laughs> I like the way this episode ended and I'm interested to see these two work together to defeat Malivore. So this is going to be good. To wrap up this video, I'm going to do three quick things. First, my quick thoughts on the episode. This episode was alright. It was interesting to learn about Cleo's backstory and realize that she is not the bad guy that we all thought she was in the previous episode. Handon's breakup, it was sad, but I kind of felt I saw it coming. And I feel like this needed to happen in order for them to grow and heal apart. And then they will find their way back to each other like they always do. I definitely, definitely missed my girl Lizzie and my boy MG in this episode. But I feel like they both will be back hopefully next week. Well, at least we know Lizzie will. Second, my quick thoughts on next week's promo. It shows Lizzie at a witch retreat. And it turns out that this is kind of like a cult type of a situation. And Hope and Josie are going to rescue her. Third, I'm going to do a quick rapid fire of the episode. Favorite scene. Um, I loved how Josie checked uh, Alaric and gave him a reality check. And questioned if he would be treating Cleo this way if she was his daughter. I loved how honest she was with him during that conversation. Favorite quote, this bitch is everywhere, Caleb. <laughs> when he was talking about Malivore, that was hilarious. <laughs> Caleb is such a comedian for real because he has made me die from laughing like almost every scene and almost every season. In three seasons, man. <laughs> Favorite duo, Josie and Finch. I'm really liking their dynamic and I'm excited to see the start of their relationship after them making it official. Favorite look, Caleb's school uniform with the, slump, with the yellow long sleeve shirt with the blazer. He looked very dapper. Uh, WTF moment, Landon aggressively punching that student. He was just seeing nothing but red, and the sound of Hope's voice was the only thing that made him stop, so it was crazy. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed my review of Legacies. I review other shows like Riverdale, All American, Good Trouble, and some other stuff. And if those interest you, please check out those videos on my channel and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe, and see you guys next week.